I'm Sean Thomas, I'm in France, and this is Local Flight. In this special episode, we're traveling abroad with local flight bartenders to discover how vodka is being crafted in France. This is the Charente region in western France. Known for its long history of spirit making, the countryside is dotted with vineyards, farmhouses, and fields. Here in the small village of juliac le coq is Le Lougie, a 16th century estate that we'll call home for the next few days. We're greeted by two of our hosts, Joe McCanta and Julianne Lafond, who are both Grey Goose brand ambassadors. Well, welcome everybody. This is the home of Grey Goose. This is Le Logis. This is slightly better than my place in Somerville. Right, yeah. <laughs> Throughout Le Logis, you'll find little areas where bars just happen to pop up. So it's a good place for you to just experiment and, and use them. This drink, have you tried it before everyone? Let me, yeah, the Grey Goose Le Fizz. Probably make the long journey float away. Ah, what a view. Man, I must have done something right <laughs> in, uh, previous to this. I certainly I mean, can't remember what it was. To think that this was actually a fortress for the farmers, like this is what kept the farmers safe during the times of war. Yeah, yeah it was a fortress for us. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Keep us in or keep them out? What do you think? <laughs> Living in such a young country like America, you don't always get to appreciate stuff like this. No, no. Know? I mean, we have a tree that's basically as old as our history in the United yeah. States. It's a 300-year-old tree. Really puts things in perspective. It really does. You ready to go to the pool? Let's go to the pool. Yes. Let's do this thing. Did you bring your Speedo? Oh, yeah. man. <laughs> Wait till you see this thing. Tonight, we'll unwind from our long voyage on the beautiful grounds of Le Logis. Hello, good morning. Today we're meeting Francois Thibault, the maître de chez or cellar master for Grey Goose, to learn how vodka is made. So François would like to wish you a big warm welcome. Nous allons passer donc euh, un moment ensemble pour euh, se plonger dans l'histoire euh, Grey Goose. And we're all going to be here to immerse in like the Grey Goose story today. The son of a cognac maker from this region, Francois apprenticed for seven years to become a maître de chez. His knowledge was cultivated by a long line of cellar masters, each with 40 years experience in the trade. Francois's revolutionary idea was to use his expertise as a cellar master to create a vodka using the best ingredients France has to offer. And that meant starting with the legendary wheat. It all starts in Picardie, in the north of France, where farmer Marc Aigret grows soft winter wheat exclusively for Grey Goose. With Grey Goose ambassador Emile Chaillot interpreting, we're finding out why Francois chose Marc and the wheat of Picardie. Marc is the 11th generation of farmer into his family. Sweet. Only the highest grade of wheat, Le Penefiable Superior, is selected, the same grade used in the finest French breads and pastries. There is uh, no irrigation. It's only natural. So your ancestors okay. farmed pretty much this exact same yes, soil. Yes, exactly. Marc, ils sont convaincus. Allez, la main. The annual wheat harvest supplies one year's production of Grey Goose. One bottle of vodka equals three square feet of field. After the wheat is harvested, it's immediately transported to the distillery. Here, Francois mills the wheat on site to ensure the freshness of the flour and to guarantee he captures the full flavor in the spirit. Francois shows us the process from grain, to flour, to the stages of fermentation. The vodka is distilled only once using a continuous column distillation process invented by Francois that ensures the quality of the wheat remains. Now that we've seen how crucial the wheat is, it's on to an equally important ingredient, water. Drawn from a natural aquifer formed thousands of years ago by rainwater trickling through limestone. You maybe can notice the different layers of limestones get denser and denser as more you go deeply. Limestone acts as a natural filter by removing pollutants and adding to the pure taste of the water. In the blending facility in Gensac in southwestern France, the spirits derived from the wheat of Picardy are blended with the pure water of the Charente Valley. The water is used 30 minutes after drawing it from the well, located right next to the facility. Before it goes through over 150 quality checks in the laboratory below, Francois tests the purity and balance of the blend the old-fashioned way. 
For the last step, each bottle is washed only with Grey Goose so that no other liquid ever touches the glass before it's filled. Back at Le Logis, I asked Julian to help me find ingredients on the grounds to make a special cocktail for the bartenders. First, we sampled herbs from the greenhouse and decided to go with rosemary to pair with the mulberries from the estate's own 300-year-old tree. These are them right here? Yeah, yeah, the berries are looking fantastic. They're looking well. great. If I can just kind of yeah, delicately can... yep. Careful. move it off yeah. there. Look at that. It's crazy the amount of juice that comes out of there is just insane. I want to try one. Can I eat one right off the tree? Go for it. All right, here it goes. Those are just delicious. Not as much tannins as the blackberry. You know how the blackberry has those really small seeds that almost add that tannic quality? Yeah. You don't get that as much. No, no, no. You really get the nice kind of round flavor and a li little acidity as oh, well, yeah. which makes it just perfect for, really for the style of drinks we're going to want to make. Yep. That's a good berry. I think I'm going to actually venture up into the tree here, Julian. Try to get some of those sun ripened ones. Maybe two, three per drink, I think, is all we'll need. There's so much juice coming out of these. Yeah, no, I don't think we need more. The color is going to be beautiful, though. Certainly. I got some really great ripe ones up here, Julian. Nice sun ripened ones. Me too, I've got a good spot there. My basket is looking pretty good. That's good. <laughs> it should be a, it should be perfect. Man, 300 year old ingredient, 300 years in the making. All the history in a glass. History in a glass. So where are you taking me now, Julian? So now we're going onto the wine yard. So you see it's, uh, it's obviously incredible and we've got 14 acres of wine yards just around the corners. So. Wow. This is just gorgeous. How do you Amazing, say right? this is majestic in, in French? C'est magnifique. C'est magnifique. What kind of grapes are these? Those are uni blanc. It's they, a little early in the season. I imagine that's is, why they're so yeah, small. You can see from the size, they're really small and also they're and bitter. Be, and they are bitter and acidic. So they're probably not what we're going to use for the no. drink. But once again, plenty of options. We've got the leaves as well. So the really? wine leaves that we can use. I'm thinking garnish there. Maybe yeah, we can really use them to time. bring something, you know, different to the plate and a bit of color. We're going to have vibrant color with the berries. Yeah, I think it's a great idea. Bringing a bit of the wine yards with Stay us. The there you go, That's top great. of the drink. That's perfect. Mulberries, fresh rosemary, and some vine leaves. Yeah, I'm excited to see what you're going to come oh, up with. Me too, <laughs> me too. In the official Le Logis bar, we're joined by Joe McCanta to help us brainstorm a recipe for this special cocktail. I gotta say, guys, I'm a little nervous. The pressure's on. I mean, I've had all these like fantastic drinks this entire season, so I feel like it's my job to really deliver and create something unique. So ideas, let's talk cocktail templates. Right off the bat, since we're obviously using the berries and the rosemary, I think that takes the aromatic, strong and stirred template off the table, so we're dealing more with sours and fresh citrus. Yeah. What else do we have here that we can incorporate? Maybe, maybe an aperitif of some kind or a liqueur. So we keep a cabinet of all French vintage liqueurs. You've got some vermouths in here. I so, see some ones I'm familiar with. I know the Benedictine. Yeah, mm -hmm. we've got the Kinale. Yeah, the 1967. <laughs> they don't make it anymore. Yeah. Wow. And actually, right next to it, so this is that Pinot de Chiron we were talking about. It's a dessert wine from around this area. I mean, it's slightly sweet, but it's basically, you know, stopping the fermentation by adding uh, some cognac in it. And you get this kind of fruitiness that yeah. you don't usually get. Can I try? Yeah, yeah. Can I try a little bit? You know, you don't want your drink to be overly complicated. Sure. So you yeah. want just kind of straightforward flavors that'll work with the fruit. People drink this all the time in France just with berries, you know, yeah. or just at the end of a meal. Let's see what you think. This is exactly what I'm looking for. It's really dry. Yeah. You get a slight bitterness, and I almost get like a honeysuckle or something like from the earth that yeah. I think will really complement and kind of bridge the gap between that rosemary and the berries. Yeah. So I think this is definitely our highlight agent. So let's talk juice. Yes. We've got a grape juice supplier actually from around here who uses Uni Blanc and other variety of grapes. And it won't be too sweet, which I think happens a lot of times, no. you know, again. Wow, that's gonna be good. So these Wait, mulberries. Yeah, I think we'll start with three of them. Three? All good things happen in threes. Exactly. So a half ounce of our... Pinot de Chant. Gonna give it a quick muddle. I mean, these berries are just so juicy. Now we have that wonderful local this grape juice. This is the juice. Uh, grape yeah. juice, yeah. We could go with an ounce and a half. Ounce right? and a half? Yes, yeah. all right, sounds with. good to me. Okay, so ounce and a half of that. C'est magnifique. The French is coming along so well. Yeah. Let's see. <laughs> Rosemary. That's gonna be pretty powerful because we've seen that it's really aromatic. So maybe four or five leaves. And then uh, can't have be a cocktail without a spirit, right? <laughs> it's true. <laughs> An ounce. 
All right. Add ice. Fortunately, I think I still got my shake. I haven't lost my rhythm. Concentrated shake. A little thing. bit of flair in the beginning, like that, <laughs> and then. Oh yeah. See that? Nice. Okay. Fine strain because we don't want any of the seeds. Oh, you got so much, and, and, and the, you got the leaves Mary, yeah. have all broken up. Oh, look at that color. It looks oh, great. That's beautiful. That's color. amazing. That's just from the mulberries, isn't it? Mm-hmm. Beautiful. And now just the garnish. Get one of these really small, delicate ones and just kind of oh, that's beautiful. Wow. float it right there. Nice. What do you say? I feel like you, you got to no, do that. Come on, I made it. It's too pretty to, I made to it drink. For you. Thank you. Oh, the nose is great. Is Rosemary's it? definitely coming through straight Good. away. Good. You know, it's really nice. It has I the mean, acidity. Genuinely, you get all of the different flavors. Like the mulberry is just kind of sitting underneath. Nice acidity. It's not like super sour. You know, it's very complex. You get, you know, the cognac side of the Pinot as well as coming through, and you still get the DNA of, of Grey Goose. I think the bartenders will be happy with this drink, but we can't leave it without a name. We're dealing with Le Logis and right. the beautiful property here, all the ingredients that we forge, and everything that Francois has put into making this wonderful product. Yeah. So I'd like to try to capture all of that and one fell Amazing swoop. word. <laughs> yeah. Maybe l'héritage could be good, the heritage. The heritage. Yeah. La heritage. L'héritage. Yeah. All right, gents, let's make a bunch of these for the bartenders, and uh, I hope they like it just as much as we did, so. I think they will. All right. Hey, guys. Hey. hey. Been slaving away in the kitchen. Here, okay. ladies. Yes. Wow. This is called Le Heritage. Here's to all of you. The reason why you guys are here is because you put a lot of love and a lot of passion in what you do and it shows. Here's to taking what we do seriously, adding our heart and soul to it, and here's to uh, being at this beautiful place. Yeah. 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 This is beautiful. You did a really good job. Thank you very much. You nailed it, didn't you? Yeah. <laughs> this is really I had good. some help, I had some help. Hey, so. thank you guys very much for having us here and also showing us what it means to make Grey Goose. Like, that's exactly what I think we're doing. Thank you so yeah. much. Long beyond. Ladies and gentlemen, that is officially a wrap on season two. Thank you so much for watching and be sure to check out all of our local flight episodes right here on Tastemade.